Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. There, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to the special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It's time again to count down the 10 hottest cards of the week. Quick program note before we get into all the details, though, this will be our last episode of the year, so there's not going to be a regular episode of the Market Watch this weekend. We will be back in the new year, however, just in time to see the repercussions of all these Cal Time previews that will be coming out in January. Now, as always, we're going to look at our top 10 cards based on two pieces of criteria. The first is percentage increase of value. The second is an increase in sales. We want to see these cards changing hands, not just an increase in asking price. That's going to help us filter out market manipulation. Quickly, though, before we get started, just a fast reminder, you can go to FlipSideGaming.com. Use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Keldheim products there. For example, if you want to pick up a set booster box, it's going to go down to 103.50 when you use the code, or a collector booster box will go down to 216. And remember, if your order is over $100, or if it's just consisting of singles, you do get free shipping in the United States. On top of that, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, let's get into it. Number 10 is Arayos or Atami Ascendant. Sub 215 to 1072 this week, that's a 25% increase. Now, this card was banned in Commander, so I can't blame that format for this increase this week, but this is a card that's performing really well in Modern on Magic the Gathering Online. Many Esper Rayo decks have gone 5-0 and in Modern Leagues, and at the end of last month, there was a copy that came in third place in the Modern Challenge. Number 9 is Winter's Night, up 270 to 1089. That's a 33% increase, and this one is on the reserve list. That's part of the reason it's moving the way it is, but what is the initial catalyst? Well, we talked about this card last week. It is still because of the snow mechanic. A lot of players have been speculating that the snow mechanic will return in Kel time. Now, a couple of things that prompted that recently, we saw the packaging. It looks very wintry. They updated the list, and when Kel time comes out, they're bringing a couple new snow cards into it, plus a lot of cards that have a cold theme in general. And I do have one more thing to say about this card, but it does tie into a very recent, I guess you could call it a leak. So if you're trying to avoid leaks, I'll let you go on to the next card at this point. Okay, so there have been some cards from Kel Time showing up in a few Commander Legends booster packs. Now, this type of thing has happened in the past. Some people don't consider this a leak. I don't know if I personally consider it a leak because Wizards accidentally put the cards out there. Also, some people believe that they do it on purpose. I personally don't think that's the case. I do think it's just an accident when they're actually producing a couple sets in the same environment. However, a few of these leak cards have given us some more perspective on what could be going on in the Keldheim set. One of the cards does directly interact with Snow. I won't really go into a lot more detail. I am going to talk about these leaks later on in the video a little too. But if you want the full details, I'll let you Google it so I don't give too much information that some might not want to hear yet. Number 8 is Phyrexian Devourer. This is from the same set. It's also on the reserve list. It goes up 277 to 1386 for a 25% increase. So this currently does see a little commander play, sometimes in Rayhan Last of the Abzan builds, for example. But the catalyst for this moving recently appears to be a thread about the card on Imagine the Gathering Finance message board. It could have brought some more attention to it, and maybe some people thought this was a good reserve list card to add to their collection before it spiked. That alone may have caused it to spike. Now I'm going to talk about those potential leaks again, so if you don't want to hear about those, I'll give you a few seconds to move to the next card. Now if you look at some of the cards that have already been previewed, combine them with some of these cards that are showing up in Commander Legends packs right now, it does appear that there is a counter theme that's going on in Cal Time. Not just plus one, plus one counters either. There appears to be a few different types of counters. So that's something to consider if you're thinking about picking up this card. It doesn't necessarily play well directly with any particular card we've seen. Also, huge plot spoiler here. So if you don't want to hear about the Cal Time plot at all, move on to the next card now. But it looks like the plane is being infiltrated by the Phyrexians. Number seven is Dwarven Recruiter, up 356 this week to 797. That is an 81% increase. This currently sees playing some Commander to Apollo Pilot Exemplar builds. However, again, this is a card moving because of Cal Time previews. Here's a few of the cards that could be pushing it that we've seen previewed recently. Obviously, it appears that the Dwarf Tribe is getting a little bit of attention in the set. You have Magda, Brazen Outlaw. Now, the next three cards are high number cards, so they don't appear in the Kaltime Draft Booster Packs, but they will be in various other products. 
you have Armed and Armored, War Chanter Scald, and Bearded Axe. Number 6 is Whim of Volrath. This goes up to 87 to 5.95 for a 186% increase. This currently does see some commander play on occasion, but the card has dried up in the secondary market online this week, which is why you're seeing this push more than anything. It could potentially be the beginning of a targeted buyout, but this card is not on the reserve list. Number 5 is Reign of Gore, up 424 to 903 for an 89% increase. This does see some modern sideboard play, sometimes in Rakdos Death Shadow builds and a few other builds in the format. Number 4 is Dwarven Blood Boiler, moving for all the same reasons Dwarven Recruiter is moving. This goes up 561 this week to 796 for a 239% increase. Number 3 is Nut Collector, up 703 to 1545 for an 84% increase. This is moving because of a new secret layer that is bringing back some key squirrel cards. It's called We Hope You Like Squirrels. Also, Mark Rosewater mentioned that there is going to be a legendary squirrel in Keltime. Number two is Lovisa Cold Eyes. Two copies here. Dual Decks Mind vs. Might, which is only found in foil. It goes up 225 to 343 this week. That's a 191% increase. Cold Snap goes up 1029 to $12. That is a 602% increase this week. Currently, this is a fairly popular commander, also sees playing other builds like Najila the Blade Blossom, for example, but this is really moving because of Kaldheim preview cards. Earlier, we already saw Magda Brazen Outlaw, but let's look at some of the cards that have already been previewed that could play very well with this. All seven of these cards are either Warriors, Berserkers, or they make Warrior Tokens. The first five are high number cards. You have Cleaving Reaper, Renegade Reaper, Certainly Flinger, Canopy Tactician, Elven Ambush, and the last two cards are two of the front-facing commanders from two of the Keltime Commander decks. You have Lathril Blade of the Elves, so you can see there's a pretty strong elf theme here too. And finally, Ranar the Ever Watchful. Also, a quick note about some of these leaks. Again, I'll pause and let you move on if you don't want to hear about them. A couple of these Keltime cards coming out of Commander Legends packs would also play well with Levisa. I'll just leave it at that for now. And number one is Jester's Mask. It goes up 1237 this week to 2054 for a 151% increase. This is on the reserve list that has seen a little commander play here or there in the past. You could argue that it is seeing a little more play now in Arcalos Lagoon Mystic builds, but really this one feels like a reserve list buyout more than anything. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Market Watch. Like I said earlier, there's going to be no regular episode this weekend. We are going to be back in 2021, so this does it for us in 2020. To everybody out there, I want to sincerely say thank you for the support you've showed the channel over the course of 2020. Have a safe and happy holiday. Have a great new year. I'll see you in 2021. Be safe out there. Be careful. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.